First of all, I feel like after watching that, we all have to take a deep breath because um, it's such an intense film. And this man is obviously an incredibly complicated and complex character who's been through almost unfathomable things in his life. He's a brilliant, sometimes bad film director. He's charismatic, he's charming, he's funny, a very tragic figure. And yet this one moment in his life, this sex crime has really overshadowed everything else. Why is that the thing that people want to talk about again and again and again? Well, maybe we can break that pattern and not talk about it tonight. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it's um, it, it was a, a dilemma for for me to get involved with the film because of the sex crime. You know, uh, something I didn't want to put my my own thoughts into it. I, I've been friends with Roman for over ten years, and we've never discussed this at all. You know. Uh, so, w when um, he called me uh, while under house arrest, and I went to see him, um, that's when those discussions started happening. And I, I never judged him, I never, you know, uh, put my own feelings into the discussion that was happening between Andy and Roman in the film. but. I, I wanted to some degree make sure that Roman said something about how he felt about it, which he does. He apologizes for the situation and he says it's ruined his life and her life and what it's done to her, what it's done to him and his family. And so I, I think it was an important thing for him to, to say and I think that it was maybe a, a kind of a, a way for him to make this film with us was, it was a way for him to talk about it in a, in, in a sense, you know. Uh, he felt comfortable. He felt comfortable. I mean, I, I don't think this film could have happened with anybody else but friends. Um, there's just no way if, if it had been like a journalist or, you know, someone like Barbara Walters, whatever, like coming in and asking questions, right. that just wouldn't have worked. Right. And I don't think that was the film that I... I, I I wanted to make anyways, you know. So let me ask you this though, just because I mean, I, I, it's obviously a complicated situation and on the one hand you have the whole, uh, there's a whole drama that went on with the actual justice system and he was treated unfairly. I mean, I think that's where there was, I don't know if any of you have seen, but there was another documentary. He makes a joke actually when he says, in part of the world I'm wanted and the other part I'm desired. That was actually the name of the documentary that really went in depth as to the whole judicial uh, process that um, was very complicated. And by the way, Andy is the one who coined that phrase okay. in the documentary, which is why it's a double. Okay. So, so I, I guess the the question is, is that, you know, how how do you justify approaching this this very sort of lascivious, the most controversial and sordid moment in his life with a degree of an incredible degree of sympathy because I mean I've read a lot about him and he said things I mean he's he had a string of romances with very young women he clearly had an attraction to young women it's definitely something in his life he's talked about it um, he hasn't always talked about it in a polite way so I guess from your perspective as someone who does know him and had more of a sensitivity because you know him how do you sort of justify Putting that sensitivity in, into the film. I mean, for me, it was it was to get him to talk about it. You know, there's no voiceover in this film. There is um, uh, Andy obviously asking him questions, but it's mainly Roman talking, and and it was his opportunity to either apologize or to say what he had to say about it. So, you know, the answer is in the film, and it's provided by him. Uh, he says as much as he wants to say about it, and and um, y you know you mentioned the other film. Uh, that film really dealt with the case, you know. And I didn't want to go into too much detail in this film because I felt it being done already. Mm -hmm. So uh, I felt, and I I don't know what you guys think, but I feel that okay. he's uh, he's apologized for it, and I think he clearly states how it. 
it affected everybody's life, you know. Let me ask you, because another thing that the film talks about is the ways in which and how famous he is, both for, it's right at the end, where they say he's, he's world famous both for his work as a director and for his private life. In what ways do you think his celebrity has been at times a blessing and at times a blight on his life journey? Well, it's, it's pretty obvious that it's been a curse and a blessing, you know. Um, if, if we remove the sex uh, story out of the, the discussion, just the situation with Sharon Tate, you know, where he was actually a suspect, even though he was in London when it happened. I mean, it's crazy when you think about it. So he, he's been, uh, uh, um, even before that, he was a victim of the media, you, you know, quite early on in his career. And I don't know why that is. He is very polarizing. He was very successful, very young. He was doing, he was a groundbreaking filmmaker. He was surrounded by beautiful women, as you said. And, and I think that uh, he was, uh, you, you know, a, a, a fascinating character, and so I think that when all of those things happen, you know, made him a target. I think. You know, I've I wanted to ask you a little bit. I mean, it was it was incredibly moving. I've I've never seen I've never heard really his Holocaust story, and he goes really in depth to uh, his experience during the war, and. I wonder what you understand being in that room with him, that there, it seemed to me that there's like this incredible loss of innocence that he never really gets to reclaim, but sort of, a, you know, maybe through his work tries to. What, what, what role do you, I mean, how, how do you see that as being this sort of seminal moment? I mean, the thing that's amazing about Roman, when you know him just casually like I do as a friend is that, he is, his energy is incredible. Uh, he's 78 and he has more energy than I'll ever have. Um, he is funny, he's a child at heart. Uh, I, when we were making the film, Jeff and I, uh, with, with, you know, we were in the, in the mountains in Gstaad and we did fireworks and he organized this whole thing like a child, you know. So there is something that I think that, having gone through the Holocaust and never had a childhood, that he's, re he, he's been determined to survive. He's a real survivor. And, and he has the most positive outlook on, on life I've ever seen in a person. Uh, even when he was under house arrest, whether or not, whatever side you are on, on, on that situation, you know, it, it was horrifying. You, you know, regardless, uh, and and he was separated from his wife, from his kids. You, you know, it was pretty tough. And he tried to be positive, and he remained positive. You know, what do you think it was? What do you think it is in his character that sort of enabled him to go on, to survive, to continue to work, to move on with his life after these incredible tragedies that he had lived through and the chaos of the, the, the criminal experience and all of that. What is it about him that sort of, I mean, a lot of people would throw their arms, like either go crazy or throw their arms up in the air, or like become, you know, a, a complete recluse. And he, he just like, he's like the energizer bunny or something. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, I, I don't want to speak for him. All, all I know is that he, he's incredibly driven. He loves what he does. You know, he loves telling stories. Um, he has movie family, you know, to be on the set with him is quite amazing. He, he's surrounded by uh, people who've worked with him since, you know, Tess, basically, when he came back to France. And it's incredible to see how much those people are dedicated to him and to his uh, vision. Uh, the energy on his sets are incredible. And, and if you are a part of that group, it's a, it, you know, he eats with the, the crew, he is, everybody loves each other, I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. And I think he's energized by that, by, by his, first of all, his wife, uh, his two kids, but by his movie family. Mm -hmm. So speaking of energy, I'm wondering, so you, I'm assuming you were present for the filming of this. N not the whole thing. Not Basi the whole thing. Basically, the way that it happened, is Andy Brownsburg, his best friend, you know, uh, said, let's film a few things. And so they did film uh, on their own to see what, what was, uh, what would come.
outcome of a discussion. Roman called me with Andy and said, "Come over, you know, we'd like to show, we'd like to show you something." So I, I went there, and and I watched uh, what they had filmed, and I said, "You know, it's great, but it's missing a second act, and it's missing a third act, a resolution." <laughs> so they said they agreed, you know, and and so we put it on ice until the situation was resolved. Once the situation was resolved, we continued filming, and that's when... Because I was going to say, there's clearly a, a change, there's a shift in the tension of the film. I totally. mean, in these, this kind of somber mode that he's in when he's under house arrest, and then all of a sudden, you know, he has a new haircut, and, you know, yeah. so I was just wondering if you had actually been there, what you, if you could well, tell us I a was, little bit about what it felt like in that room, you know. Well, I was there, you know, mm -hmm. right after they had filmed, because that's when I watched mm -hmm. it, and, and, and uh, he was still under house arrest, and it was still pretty tense, you know, he couldn't obviously live, uh, get out of the, the, the house, you know, just a little bit outside, but not too far. And, and the routine every day, you know, was really weird to be with someone who has a bracelet around their ankle. You know, it's just, it was just a strange situation for me. And I was very nervous about, right. about going there and, and, and seeing him and going like, what, what do you say? You know? Do you get the sense that it matters to him or he cares at all about resolving that situation and ever coming back to the U.S.? Or at this point, do you think he's pretty much given up on that hope? I don't know. You know, I don't want to answer that because I, I really don't know. Again, you know, I, when it came to any of that stuff, even Sharon Tate, uh, I let him tell me what he felt he wanted to say. You, you, you know, uh, maybe that doesn't make me a good uh, journalist, but hopefully a good filmmaker because I, I, I was very respectful of my subject, you know. And I think the film is being criticized, you know, worldwide for being... Uh, too much on his side or mm -hmm. you know and I'm like well, well that's obvious I wanted know? I actually wanted to remind you you said in an interview with the Jewish Journal this is your quote you said I think it allows for people who knew these stories and judged him to understand the person and make up their own mind on where they stand about his character so I wanted to ask you why is Roman Polanski the best judge of Roman Polanski's character. Why? Yeah, he has a story to tell. And I think, you know, again, until that film, you had never heard it from his mouth. It was being heard by third party people or by old footage that didn't have the historical perspective, you know. Uh, so I think this was an opportunity, and I believe that this movie is a document of this man that will stay forever, much more than something that was maybe tapping into uh, uh, a specific situation, you know, that, that, uh, that this film really talks for his entire character. I think he's the best judge. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that that's necessarily the word. He's the best person to tell a story, you know, because... Uh, his point of view is important. He's never been heard. But I'll tell you something interesting along those lines is that when we were cutting the film, there were things that had been said that needed to be dubbed because they would say something like, oh, Jack came to the house. And we're like, well, who is Jack? You know, Jack Nicholson. So it, little things like that. So um, I went over to Romans and I said, you know, we need to do some dubbing. Well. In many cases, he could not reproduce the voice that he had while under house arrest. So that was really interesting, wasn't it, Jeff? Uh, that that we could not capture the same emotion, which confirmed to us actually that this was really a moment captured in time where that could never be reproduced. If this film was done again today by someone else, you you, you know he wouldn't have the same voice or the same. Uh, determination to tell his story, you know? Yeah, it is kind of amazing how sort of open and emotional he is about all of these things. It's pretty extraordinary. So I wanted to give the audience an opportunity to ask some questions. I'm sure you have your own thoughts um, on this very provocative film. Um, yes, right here in the front. I want to say thank you so much for making this film because I've been studying film since I was 10 years old for over 20 years. I've read all the 
books. I read the books that he's written. And uh, become a great fan. So I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks. It gives his fans peace of mind knowing that he's been hurt so badly and, and not given a voice. So knowing that he's doing do you have a, well. Do you have a, I just want to, do you have a question? Yes, doing well and okay. with his family and everything. So my question, uh, my question is, uh, I was at his trial in 2009 uh, when it got with Judge Peter Espinoza, and it got canceled by Bart Dalton on January of 2009. So I was wondering if you could tell me, uh, do you know why it was canceled, and is it I don't. going to be rescheduled? Yeah, no, I don't. There's an, you can read, there's an article in The New Yorker that you can read that will answer that question for you. But, but thank you so much for your compliments and your thoughts. I really appreciate it. Who else? Anybody else? Back in, all the way in the back. So the question is, um, so the question is, do, do you, does he feel that Polanski had a certain amount of contempt for his victim? Feeling of superiority. Feeling of superiority. I, I don't think so, and I don't think that's uh, the impression that he gives. I, I hope it's not. Um, I, I think he, he has contempt for the situation that he put himself in. But I, I don't think that he, uh, he has any contempt for the girl at all. Uh, right here. You know, um, thanks for asking. Um, I don't think so. There will be, it will be available on, on VOD. And, and uh, it's interesting, you know, the film has been theatrically released in many countries. Japan, Australia, Germany, Spain. I mean, like really incredibly Has there well. been much of a different, have, have, has the release and the, the yeah. reviews, the critics, has it, has it varied widely from country yeah. to country? And or? I mean, here it was, it was the few reviews that came out were absolutely horrible, you know. Um, so it affected the fact that it's not being, uh, and I thought they were unfair in the sense that they're judging, I think, they're looking for answers on certain things or expecting the film to be right. something else, right. you know. Um, so, right. you know, I mean, I'm not a, the best judge of, of reviews of my film, but... Um, so, as it, of it now, will, so the question was, will there be a national theatrical release? And as of now, the answer seems to be no. no but it will be available on... Like maybe on, on, Netflix, on Netflix or, or something like that. Okay. Uh, um, okay, we have...